Hello guys and welcome back to a new episode of Italian Politician of the Week. I am Ipernik, the Great is Silent, and today we're talking about Alessandro Di Battista, once one of the most popular members of the Five Star Movement. Di Battista's story is very similar to the one of Grillo and Di Maio, a man who joins something bigger than himself while having no discernible quality or skill, just to get dragged into a world where they don't belong. However, while Grillo's story ends with him losing his mind and Di Maio's story with him becoming exactly what he sought to destroy in the first place, Di Battista is a lot more complicated. Unlike many of his colleagues, his values and objectives did, did not change with the evolution of the movement. And sure, that, that means he's still stuck in 2016 when it comes to certain aspects of his policies, but it also shows a high level of coherence that is hard to not respect. The question that I asked myself when I began working on this video is the reason behind his coherence? Is it because he truly believes and values his ideas and is willing to fight for them or is he stupid? Let's find out. Roll the intro. Di Battista was born in 1978 in Rome. He got a degree in arts, music and acting in the early 2000s. However, he never really worked in entertainment. Instead, he became a freelance journalist and got a master's degree in international protection of human rights, specializing himself in Latin American issues. After graduating, he worked for a year as a, as a cooperator in Guatemala, dealing with education and, and productive projects in indigenous communities. Later, in 2010, he will travel to throughout the continent to write his book called On New Continental Politics. His first real political action was when he ran for Rome's city council in Grillo's list in 2008, back before the Five Star Movement was even born. He didn't get elected, but his cooperation with the comedian was far from over. In 2011, he will start writing consistently on the blog, specifically on South America, and after two long years of political activism around Lazio, he was voted in as member of the Chamber of Deputies, a position he held from 2013 to 2018. Again, it is interesting to note how it was not Grillo or someone else in the party who decided to allow Di Battista to run for office, but it was the readers of the blog who did it by voting in community polls in the site. Just a quick reminder that I also do polls almost every week and that you can vote in them to help me out choosing the next politician to make a video about. So yeah, be sure to like the video and subscribe to my channel if you like what I do. But back to Di Battista. When he was in the Chamber of Deputies, he quickly became well known for his incredibly well-written and heartfelt parliamentary speeches, which were promptly posted on YouTube by the Five Star Movement YouTube channel, getting thousands of views. The content of these speeches were mostly critiques on the Renzi and Gentiloni administration, which were often accused of not being transparent enough on, on their programs, or straight up disingenuous. I talked about Renzi before, if you think I should cover him again, perhaps to be more up to date with his current shenanigans and to make a proper evaluation of his performance in government, be sure to let me know by liking the video. Let's try to reach uh, 20 likes uh, with those numbers, I will see what I can do. The speeches were certainly very engaging and Di Battista gained a lot of praise and fame from them. However, he was very hit or miss when it came to, you know, actually being informed. Di Battista, alongside most of the party at the time, used as their main source a bunch of newspapers which were born to compete with Berlusconi's media empire. And while their existence was more than plausible, if not essential for the health and stability of our democracy back when Berlusconi 
Berlusconi was not just a speaking corpse, it has worsened in quality over the years. No newspaper fits the description, I just gave you more than Il Fatto Quotidiano, run by Marco Travaglio, who constantly challenges the principles of ethical journalism by making crazy accusations of corruption to politicians with little to no proof. At first he focused mostly on right-wing people, but after Berlusconi lost its grip on the country, there was no big enemy to rally against and so Travaglio started going after the entire political spectrum, losing the respect of many in the process. By allowing himself to be associated to Travaglio's stances and, and tactics, Di Battista found himself in the midst of many controversies. But before I go any further, I think it is important for me to explain Di Battista's political ideas. At the very beginning of his book, he claims to believe in the welfare state and the Republican constitution. I believe in the defense of savings, in the principle of self-determination of peoples and in multiculturalism. I don't love NATO and I hate what NATO has done in the last 20 years. I support the Palestinian cause, the nationalization of highways for Italy, as well as small and medium-sized enterprises. Furthermore, I believe that a law on conflict of interest is essential, especially on the eve of the arrival of the recovery fund. I am Catholic, but I care that the religious institutes have not paid the due taxes. I support the fight against the mafia and I think that nowadays it cannot be effective without the legalization of soft drugs. Given these points, he seems a moderate tanky to me. I've given a different color to the statements I agree with. Let me know in the comments what you think. Given his positions, it is not a big surprise, he started to grow bitter towards the Five Star Movement, which was clearly institutionalizing and growing distant from its rebellious origins. Di Battista left, left the movement in February of 2021, when the party decided to vote in favor of Mario Draghi's government of national unity. On a political level, uh, Di Battista's resignation from the party he grew up in doesn't really matter be because he has left the parliament four years ago, but, but it certainly gave him more freedom to express his ideas and to get richer off of his books, full of far-fetched ideas on geopolitics. According to Di Battista in his latest book, Italy is not a completely independent nation because the NATO alliance is not so much of an alliance, rather a toxic relationship between the United States and most of the West. Let's try to be pragmatic though, complete independence is unachievable in a globalized world unless you want to be backwards and dangerous as North Korea or the city of Cosenza in Calabria, very scary. And sure, NATO has done many questions things in the past, but I don't think that antagonizing it is the right step to take while Russia is attacking another country just because it decided to join an alliance which Putin did not like. That's right, I'm going to talk about Ukraine. Are you guys happy? Di Battista has always been present on TV, but his takes have been questioned a lot more in the past few weeks. The day before the invasion, Di Battista actually said that Putin, by acknowledging the existence of Donbass, is actually trying to make peace and not cause a war. Sadly, he could not have been more wrong since he invaded a few hours later. Sure, Di Battista is far from the worst person to listen to in these terrible times, but come on, you can't just say that sending aid to Ukrainians violates the constitution. I understand him when he gets mad when political leaders such as Enrico Letta call him a Putin supporter, but again, you can't just write down that you are in favor of self-determination and then refuse to help the Ukrainian people that are fighting for that very same principle. I'm actually very happy to see how most, if not all, of Italy's main political parties have sided firmly with Ukraine. Even the leaders who once stood bes besides Putin have decided to turn their backs on him, while of course paying the consequences of their actions. When it comes to the Italian political situation, there is a lot of poetic justice going around and Di Battista is no stranger to this. In all honesty, I don't think that Di Battista can be more than what he is today, hence somebody who has many opinions and goes on TV to share them in debates. While I do appreciate him on a personal level, he is heavily flawed and overestimates his understandings of geopolitics. I have been thinking about making a video on the Russo-Ukrainian war specifically, on how it has impacted the stances and relations among the party leaders and institutions in Italy. I wish I had more time for it, 
it, but believe me, I'm doing my best to fit it in between my classes and conferences for my job as a reporter. I received many comments regarding my new job and I, have, and I was very happy to read them, since they were all positive. I'm not going to let you down and, and I will do my best to keep this channel active and transparent. Thanks again for watching and I will see you next time.